come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest to take over the world. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Sean. What did we watch this season? The, the, heart, the, heart, the most heartfelt season of the year uh, for you Valentine's Day lovers out there. We watched My Bloody Valentine 2009 in 3D. In 3D. We did watch it in 3D. In 3D. <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll get into that. And directed by Patrick Lussier. Who we would know from. Patrick Lussier started out, I mean, uh, what most people know him from is he was the editor of at least the first four Scream movies, I believe. Um, and then he went on to write and direct movies of his own. Uh, Drive Angry, Dracula 2000. Um, I mean, recent ones like Trick. He also did the uh, Dracula 2000 sequels that were direct to video. Uh, did you hear that? That's the sound of Patrick Lussier getting added to this hey! official wall for you. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, wants to know us to know that Patrick Lussier uh, did Dracula 2000, which we did an episode Iconic. on. Iconic. Uh, My Bloody Valentine 3D and Drive. Drive I wasn't here for the Dracula 2000 oh. episode. I, I like apparently you guys had a good time. Oh, yeah. like, I oh, don't yeah, remember yeah, how yeah, I yeah, felt yeah. about yeah. that movie. Um, I think I saw Virgin it once. Records features prominently in right. that movie, so that's I'm a, having a, a great time. That's yes. a Danny Masterson movie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody's in that yes. movie. It's right? like a huge cast of like, oh hey, I remember Jerry Ryan from Star Trek. Oh geez. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, got I, a bunch of people. As far as I'm concerned, on the Freak Show, Patrick Lucy is bat, bat in a thousand for me. I have not seen a bad movie on this. That's because we show. haven't brought the one that he wrote <laughs> that uh, the Terminator <laughs> Genesis. Oh, Gen Weiss's? That uh, one? Gen Weiss's. With the, is that the one with um, what's her name from Game of Thrones? Amelia Clark? Yeah. As Sarah yes. Connor? Okay. Yeah. That's also got Matt Smith yeah. is also in that <laughs> yep. as as, as John Connor. Isn't he John Connor? No, he's not John Connor. Oh. He's, uh, he's spoiler alert. He's a Terminator who right. mm. infiltrates the ranks in the future. I believe. Oh, no, that's yeah, the one with what's his name? Him. Who's who's uh who's the 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 blank face dude? Uh, oh, I Sam, can't remember. No, no, no Sam he was in the one the before. One. Yeah. yeah. A lot of blank Terminator face salvation. Dudes. Right. You remember when Christian Bale was in a Terminator movie? Yeah, They've gotten Terminator everybody. Sal I know, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. looking that the other day. Yeah. I'm just like, what are Terminator uh They get everybody. Uh, what was it called? Salvation. 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 Mm -hmm. Just like that was a weird time yes mm -hmm. and this whole thing that was the yes. one that has the video game that won't die it's everywhere it's the shooting game if oh, you go shit. to an arcade Maybe they still to have it to the freak to show. <laughs> jason clark jai courtney jai oh, courtney, jai courtney. Jai courtney. Yeah. from uh, jai bless yeah from uh, die Squad? hard or another uh, a, 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 bad day a, good, a good day a good to die day hard. hard no it was a bad day to <laughs> die hard but it was called a good day to die hard and suicide squad right suicide yeah. Squad, yeah. yeah yeah where he actually had some character a, a little, yeah. a little. So i'll give him that i mean you know captain boomerang i think his yeah. character was in that movie yeah Didn't but lucy he, oh sorry was he the one punching women in the face for fun i think he did that yeah yeah okay captain that might have been yeah. i think he was back for the sequel no no he, no never mind okay so <laughs> let's go no let's get into jay courtney right now <laughs> this is the episode where we do it so patrick lucier he had started working with west craven i think as far back as like new nightmare right I and mean, so he kind of yeah. lucked into because he did vampire right. in brooklyn also i think mm -hmm. and then you know was working for west craven and then became part of the scream thing um he started uh, as an editor on MacGyver in 1989. Oh my god, what a cool editing job that would be. That'd be pretty good. Your first good. editing yeah. job to be an action, so, action series like MacGyver? That sounds right. awesome. And you're right. Wes Craven's New Nightmare in 1994, that's where he started with him. So he, he was part of the crew. So Vampire that's why. Vampire in Brooklyn, D3, The Mighty Ducks, Doctor Who, Scream, Mimic, Scream 2, Halloween, H20, 20 years later, Music wow. of the Heart, Dragon 2000. Music of the Heart. Got all yeah, the Wes, Wes Craven, Craven ones in there. Scream 3, My Boss's Daughter, right. <sighs> Cursed, Red Eye, yep. A lot yeah, of Wes Craven all. on there. Yeah, yeah. And so he's part of the core team. That's why I think Dracula 2000 was a Wes Craven presents, right? Mm -hmm. To give Lucier his shot. Low so bump. yep. The other creative force in this movie is the writer, Todd Farmer, right? Mm -hmm. Who got his start? I'm not. I don't remember what his first movie was, but I'll, he did I'll get there. Jason X. Right. That's what he like became his breakout. Maybe you would say yeah, was I think with Jason so, X. Yeah. Yes, but he's also had like he's gotten a shot at writing probably every horror property since then because he's uh he's been him, rumored to be attached to everything right but point. he i think him and patrick lussier 
I think it was, wrote a version of Halloween 3D. Yeah. Yes. That was supposed to come out after Rob Zombies. Yeah. And, yeah, yes. yeah, it was the Rob Zombies. The way Scout Taylor Compton tells it, they brought on her and Tyler Maine, but they fired Rob Zombie and we're going to replace him with Patrick Lussier. Right. And those two will let, claim they walked because of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's where the way she tells it. Yeah, least, but so. I think there's either a synopsis or the actual script now right. probably exists because I think that was this the, the success of this movie for Lionsgate kind of gave the duo, right? Todd Farmer and Patrick Lussier like a license to go do it again and they did Drive right. Angry. Yep. Um and then the third one I think was supposed to be Halloween. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know if they parted ways or whatever, but uh, somehow Lucier made the decision to it was Leda Cordo Logos. I can't remember mm-hmm. her name. Did uh, Terminator Gen Genesis? I'm right. not sure if they've teamed up as Trick or um, I was, was just the new looking one? at it. Trick was written by Todd Farmer. So it was back together. Okay. So they so they made, yeah, because yeah. for a while there, like Todd Farmer was like homeless, wasn't getting work. Like he was having a Damn, real was that bad for him. Real tough time. It yeah, was an real article tough time. On yeah, because he seemed to be everywhere, and you know, as far as like talking about movies and stuff. But there was an article where he said that yeah, after somehow. With the success of these movies and then the fact that, you know, he wasn't getting work, that that job on Terminator fell through. Mm, um, right. Uh, you know, I don't know how people manage their money or whatever, but he said basically in L.A. you have to be present at all these parties and it's an expensive lifestyle in order to kind of, you know, get another right. Uh, right. another gig. Stay in yeah. that circle and yeah. Yeah, keep yeah. those gigs and everything. Uh, he ended up like... Uh, I, yeah, I think he was homeless or working at Target or something wow. in order to. So, I mean, hopefully he's doing okay now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, the last thing he wrote was Trick in 2019. There was a, a gap. Drive Angry mm-hmm. was 2011. Mm-hmm. And then he didn't write anything until eight years later with Trick. And there was a big gap as mm-hmm. far as movies go in between there. So, yeah. Yeah. And he's an actor, too. He's been in a lot of the movies that he's. He, he was in Jason X. Yep. Mm-hmm. He got on the, the spot. I think he. No. He got cut in half during the VR game in Jason X. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then he was in this and uh, Drive Angry, where he always uh, has to uh, get himself naked. Always. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, wasn't he in the motel in yeah. Drive yeah, Angry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was getting a real mind fuck during that scene in this movie because I was like, this feels like I've watched this scene in so many movies. Right. And they're all Todd Farmer movies Todd that I've Farmer seen this exact movies, yeah. scene in. Yes. <laughs> we'll get to it, but. Um, so this is a remake. We're coming at you from the remake era. Yep, from 1981's My Bloody Valentine. Yep, which we also have covered on the show, so you we can go did. back and, and compare and contrast. The unrated version. Mm-hmm. Yep. The, the better only, version. The only yeah. version. Yeah, technically, yes. Um, yeah, because, I mean, My Bloody Valentine, the first one, I think uh, that was we were talking about on the, the original the show episode. Mm-hmm. The phenomena has taken place like since its release. It's now regarded as one of the best. Uh, slasher movies of the 80s because they put all the gore back in. Right, yeah. There is a big difference between the original version and the gore being put back in there. I know a lot. Much more interesting. I know a lot of people have like revisited and reevaluated their opinion of that movie, but I still feel like that's a subculture and not the mainstream still. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's amongst our types of people, but like I would like to live in a universe where my bloody Valentine is as ubiquitous as Halloween, you know, like that's where I want it to be because that's where it deserves to be because it's so fucking good. If nothing else, that's just, it's still a great costume. Yeah. That's a good look for a killer. It has a good look. It has a good story. The minor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it it hits all points. It's good. And like, but could you imagine a parallel universe where we have like 13 My Bloody Valentine movies instead of Halloween? (laughs) No, I I can't either because it's just like, does he show up in like Hawaii where there are no mines? Like, does he always have to be near a mine? Like, does he draw his power from the mine? Does he become a ghost later on and unkillable? I mean, there's mines all over the world, so we could, We may get more into Jason territory with it than Halloween. Yeah. I think, but yeah. So it's actually yeah. a good thing we're saying that it's not. It is like, a good it, thing. It's yes. remembered yeah. as a classic of that genre, right. but we didn't not beat the successful shit out of it. enough yeah. to yeah. have them beat the shit out of it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So this is um coming in kind of at the tail end of the horror remake wave that started in 2003 mm-hmm. with the Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre, and then they mm-hmm. remade every single. Yes. Uh, Most of which we've done you know, on the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're, yeah. we're knocking them down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this oh. one is special. Yeah. Because it's in 3D. Because it caught another wave. It did. It really did. Yeah. A a short wave that James Cameron really wanted to ride for probably the rest of his career. But sorry, dude. You know what? Justice for this movie. Because we did some research right before we jumped on the (laughs) mic here. We had always argued about who who did it first. Like, who started the wave? Was it Avatar or was it My Bloody Valentine? My Bloody Valentine. This movie came out almost a full calendar year before 
Avatar. This yep, came out yeah. in January 2009. Avatar came out in December 2009. Yet Avatar gets all the credit with reviving 3D and bringing it back to the cinema. And I understand that that was a major blockbuster right. movie. Right. But this is the one that but got like... This oh. one uses it in a more interesting way. Yes, because well, this is the pokey 3D. Yeah. And yeah. it's the first horror movie released in like the real the real D 3D mm-hmm. format that you but still see. But it's easy to make everything 3D and weird when it's like not a real universe. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when you have to, the limitations right. of physics in the human universe and you have to use 3D within that, that's different right. than just like creatures in space or in a... In a well, because it means you know? like you have to actually have a photographer who's right. sitting there going, you know, like looking at foreground, mid-ground, and, and background. You right. know, like, compose a shot. Yes, you know, exactly. Like you have to yes, actually right. be, like, a good cinematographer. Yep. Right. Um, so Avatar, I think, was the catalyst yes. for this, only because James Cameron had been working with 3D technology and developing the camera system. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a couple of IMAX uh, movies. Ghost of the where, Abyss. Yeah, he yeah. went to, and then Robert Rodriguez uh, used that technology to make... Um, Spy Kids? Yeah, the Spy <laughs> Kids movies, which were, when they came to theaters... Uh, I, uh, movies were still on film, I think, at that point. Mm-hmm. So those were the red and blue anaglyph 3D, even mm-hmm. though they sh- they were shot with Cameron's mm-hmm. system. Right. And uh, My Bloody Valentine was shot, I believe, with the Cameron system or some, mm-hmm. you know, like a derivation of it. So because Avatar was in production right. for so long, mm-hmm. it just made right. it to right. theater like a yeah. year before Avatar yes. came out because James Cameron takes so long to make those yes. those movies. Was, yep. was Sin City released in 3D? No, no, not okay. the first one. The second one. Okay, was. the yes. second one. Okay, I was trying to because that was a bit earlier, and I. But no, I, and also the spirit was released in 3D, right, so I might right. be thinking of yeah, that right. too. The <laughs> city would have been good in 3D. Yeah, that would that would have mm-hmm. been uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, we're talking about Pokey 3D. Pokey 3D. Yeah, pointy we're stuff. Looking, we're looking at you, Jaws 3. <laughs> yeah, and Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. And but when you watch this movie, it does Final have that four. Yeah, and five, <laughs> and five, yeah, five. Oh, and five. Yes, oh, but yeah. not three. No, not three. In 3D. Yep. Um, but yeah, the the like something will break through a windshield and poke you in the face in this, and then instead of cutting away, it hangs on it because it's the three D illusion. I yep. mean, this is the gimmick of three D, but it's also why you go to see three D movies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like you go see these other movies that have been post converted or whatever. Look at you, my soul to take. Yeah. yeah. If we're gonna stay in the West Craven bandwagon, or even like I remember the next. It was like maybe the next year, even seeing Clash of the Titans in theaters, and that was a horrible post converted three D. Yep. So it was like oh, yeah. that, those they, first couple were bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Post conversion. Conan the Barbarian, the, the the Jason, Jason Momoa one was uh, bad. Yeah. Uh, Piranha 3D is not very good either. I mean, like the the conversion. Mm-hmm. Um, Immortals. Ooh, do you remember that Henry Cavill movie? Yeah, Immortals? but that, the conversion on that was actually pretty good. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I you guys went and saw still, some shit movies. Yeah, in 3D. we did. Oh my god, during 2009, 2011. Yeah, there's a real shit storm of bad 3D movies in that. They're time. Like, we can do 3D and charge yeah. more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do but it. This like has that kind of. I guess that's it. You know, there's some things to this type of horror movie. I mean, it's like a, you know, a a slasher movie. It's not trying to be anything that it isn't, but it is playing into the gimmick. I remember the TV commercials for this, you know, had, we're we're watching all the people in the audience with the glasses on Mm -hmm. and the miner was like throwing stuff through the theater, you know, and all that. Right. And you'd see like, you'd see the screen and you see the crowd and like the, the pickaxe would come into the crowd is how they advertise it. Yeah. So you got that. You got audience pleasing 3D. This is going to be yep. you pay your money to see this movie and you're going in for a thrill ride. Exactly. But but you I mean the horror movie they try and make the thrill ride but then you add 3D on top of it they're like, "Oh, it's it's everything you could ever want plus yeah. you may die." <laughs> Maybe the, something comes out. The, the killer is in the room with you. you. Yeah. yeah. You know what slasher movies are probably the best horror movies to make 3D, right? They can, it's I mean, it's kind of it's long. It's got to be right? there's a lot of things you can poke at people. Right, yeah. Your environment, yeah, cuz like people, a possession movie in 3D is not going to Yeah, no, do I don't want to see that. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't want no like, cuz what's the go- somebody's going to reach out yeah. towards you? No, that's I not fun. I saw the ghost dimension cuz like you said, I went and saw all of these bad movies just to suffer through it in 3D. Yeah. Um okay, so who so Okay, they're they're taking the established story of My Bloody Valentine. Yeah, Harry the, Warden. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Without his song, unfortunately. 
the ballad of probably Harry the Warden. biggest ding against this movie, right? Probably like <laughs> you gotta, no song. You got to do it. Like you got to do even it. Even if you just put over the credits, you know, like right. just something, just mm-hmm. or even just a hint at it. Which mm-hmm. come on, I yeah. mean that's what the first one has going for it. That kind of folksy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, right. small more there's more kind of legend thing. to it. Yeah. Like here we get it's more of like uh, uh, newspaper headlines and <laughs> okay, but this title sequence is fucking cool. That's a good one. I love that this movie opens with we get kind of like a narrative dump over a bunch of like um yeah newspaper clips and crime scene photos and like cool cutouts of like the miners yeah. but it's like it's layered with the depth of field in 3d so you're like going like going down a mine shaft at one scene <laughs> yep. and like it's all these cool kind of paper crafts on top of it it's like a pop-up book it's like yeah it's really cool and it's really it's well good. done and it serves a narrative purpose bravo <laughs> no, no no it's perfect love it right you accomplished yeah. what you needed yeah. to do good yeah and it was interesting and and you trusted me as an audience member to be smart enough to take this information and my have my attention span focused on this title sequence which i feel like audiences don't get given that benefit of the doubt anymore like it's like we have to get that them into the movie as quickly as possible because if we waste any time up front with credits they'll lose interest mm. you know uh, yeah in the age yeah. of netflix where you can just like skip yeah. so quickly right you know? yeah you can yeah. skip sequence well it skip does intro. get off to it gets off to a quick start because it's got to pack a lot of you know, we have to set up, well, who, who's the killer? So we have to kind of start in the past with mm-hmm. right. this incident. Uh, Harry Warden being a miner who was involved in, a, in an accident in the mine where the mm-hmm. mine exploded or something. Seven guys were killed, but then they find out that each guy had a pickaxe and injury to the, the head. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because mm-hmm. he had to. He had to kill them to steal their oxygen to live. Yeah. It's like eating your fellow crew members <laughs> in alive. Yeah. <laughs> But he gets uh, rescued and taken to the hospital, and then there is a uh, bloodbath that ensues. We get to see inside chest cavities. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like the makeup cavities. effects are pretty good. You're like, oh, it's 3D. I feel like I can almost reach in there. Yeah. <laughs> um. We're introduced to the original, or sorry, the in, in this is, this takes place in the past. Mm-hmm. They've yep. all got flip phones, so mm-hmm. it's like the nineties or something. It's well, if this movie's present day, it, it was ninety nine. Then when it was supposed to start, oh okay, so ten years been, earlier. Yeah, yep. Which okay. tracks the way they were dressed. Yeah, but even later on, they have flip phones. Where even yeah. we're three years into the iPhone at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. So who's our principal cast of My Bloody Valentine three D? Jensen Ackles. Who yeah, we would know Hackles, from Supernatural? Supernatural. Anything the boys, else? The, the, the boys. boys. That's right. He's on the boys now. Amazing on the boys now. He Soldier Boy, which is like a Captain America analog. Right. Yeah, it's pretty great. And this is 2009, so the Supernatural boys are getting into their horror remakes. Yes. Because uh, what's his name? Well, Pat was in uh, the Friday the 13th remake. And yeah. House of Wax. That was 05. That so was 05. Yeah. Already, yeah. He, 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 he was ahead. Yeah. Of, yeah, he's probably telling Jensen, it's like, like yeah, dude, it's a bro. good paycheck. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. it's probably fun. And uh, yeah. yeah, not too much pressure on you to make a great movie. It's because it's a horror movie. So. Right. Yeah. And you have a built in audience. I mean, right. I guess that's why they're casting. The WB them, but... crossover effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they both did slasher remakes. That's mm-hmm. like yeah. that's kind of cool. wild. That, yeah, yeah, and it fits in with their supernatural kind of where they are at in their careers at that point. You know what that means? We have to do the Friday the Thirteenth remake now to complete the Jared Padalecki <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> uh, this is coming. I mean, we just, did House of Wax. We, we, we did. Know. I just watched it, it though, and it's just not <laughs> real good. <laughs> Sean's there's, like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying there's stuff me. to talk about. I'm sure. Oh yeah. Well, there's definitely <laughs> stuff to talk about in it. Yes. Yeah. But we also have um, uh, we got Jensen Eccles, we got Jamie King, mm-hmm. who plays his uh, early love interest in the movie when we're in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Kerr Smith, mm-hmm. who we all would know from, I mean, Final Destination. Final kind Destination. of put him on the map yep. uh, as far as that goes. Well, Dawson's Creek. Dawson's, Dawson's, Dawson's Creek, well, okay, Creek you're right. No, I'm sorry, Dawson's yeah. Creek, yes, yeah. for a number of years. Mm-hmm. And then when he got into movies, Final Destination, this yep. movie, he shows up every now and again in some he stuff. He should be doing horror conventions. I don't know if he's Seems still like- doing stuff. But he, so, I see him every now and again. I bet you he's on like some CBS cop drama or some shit. Yeah. And these three people are basically forming the axis of this movie, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah. the, uh, the Tom, um, Sarah, and Axel, mm-hmm. um, like romantic triangle, formed like mm-hmm. the main part of the original movie. So that's yes. kind of what they're bringing over here. Yes. But they also have to subvert your expectations if you've seen the original movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of like what they're doing narratively to 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 twist that around a little right. bit mm-hmm. i but i had to look it up because i forgot 
how the first one, who what the killer was in the first one. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, was it Harry? It wasn't Harry Warden. I was like, ah, no, it was Axel. <laughs> and so they do. They play with you. Yeah. This one. Um, so uh, Tom, the Jensen Ackles character, is the son of the guy who owns Henniger Mine. This yep. is the mine that supports the entire town. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but this is not Valentine Bluffs. Right. No, which I think is harmony. Is, why change it? I know. Like That's we didn't. A, yeah. Like if it's gonna be my bloody Valentine, like just go full force into Valentine. It doesn't make sense for a town harmony to be celebrating Valentine's Day like crazy if they're not called Valentine Bluff. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, like they really should. I mean, that we was get the whole thing. <laughs> we get the Valentines and all that stuff, but it doesn't feel like. There was no bluffs though. There was just yeah. a river. Yeah, yeah. wherever they cho- chose to shoot this. Right. Why couldn't town? it be Valentine Bluffs? Right. Like, why? Why not just do it again? Like right. really dig into it and go for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a weird change. Yeah, it's yeah. a weird change. Why they didn't? Just, I mean, mm-hmm. who knows? With legal issues, I doubt. I, I can't imagine there that would sign be. design is trademark. Don't do, use the right. same yeah, neon no. sign. That was, just, that was a good sign. Let's bring that <laughs> sign, sign back. Um. In order to talk about this movie, do we have to spoil it? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay, so we're going to spoil yeah, it right here. Yeah, because there's trickery here. afoot. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe. I think so. Listener, warning, we are going to spoil My this Bloody one, Valentine 3. the first years. one. Yep. yep. So, Anything really? Maybe Final Destination. Who knows? We're gonna spoil a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah, we spoil every movie. I guess that we yeah. talk about, but usually yep. at the end or where it occurs in the movie. But I think this one you have to kind of because we're gonna talk to about how it, they yeah. set this up right. through the movie, mm-hmm. and so we're gonna spoil it. So here you go. This is your spoiler warning. Get out now. <laughs> Get out now. Don't don't leave. Okay, where are you going? <laughs> so okay. those of us who are still here are gonna talk about that the. the Big change. Oh, how many people just went click. <laughs> They're like, we're gonna go watch the movie okay. first. Well, Tell them you have to get, send us a screenshot of you know the spot that was right. Can to we? Most. Can we? Yeah. Can we do the, the just like where everybody most dipped listen. out? Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. So so farmer and Lucier subvert your expectations because you're going into it going. I saw my bloody Valentine right. and I know Axel is the killer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. So we're like, is Axel gonna be the killer again? Or are they going to make it Tom this time around? Mm-hmm. Um, they're basically keeping the two characters in similar positions. Axel is the one who stayed in the town. Mm-hmm. Tom is the one who left. Mm-hmm. Yep. The reasons for their leaving is different. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this one, Tom feels responsible for a you know whatever he didn't bleed he didn't, the lines. He didn't, he didn't or bleed something. the lines, and he left the um, uh, methane in the in the in the mine, and he blew up. Which caused the cave in, yeah. which eventually led to Harry Warden killing like six other dudes to try and stay alive. So he is mm-hmm. responsible. Mm-hmm. And the and uh, yeah, I don't remember why he left town in the first one. But and then Sarah, mm-hmm. who was with Tom, yep, ends up after his him leaving town, ends up marrying Axel. Mm-hmm. I think Axel's the one that got her out of the mine when mm-hmm. yes, yeah. after. Uh, Harry Warden does uh, his attack in the hospital. He does end up putting back on the miner's costume and attacking people in the mine. Yeah, there's like a really, is that a cold open if it's this long? It's almost like the first act of the movie, this whole. It's weird because we get the title sequence before. Right. It feels like the title sequence should come after that. And then yes. we should have been title sequence 10 years later. But that's what but the Friday did. 13th movie did. Right. But yeah. they didn't do that in this. Yeah, we got exactly. a title sequence when we were still in the past. Yes. Yeah. I kind of dug it. It's yeah. weird, but it's, weird. it's starting with like an ending. You know, yes. and they right. say good movies, yeah. good screenwriting, you should. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is like propulsive. And you're like, oh, we're into this. And there's, right. you know, there's a body can't count happening already. Um, Lots of good, good deaths here. Good stabbings. Good. Oh, my God. What I mean, that original is hard to top, too, because that original's yeah, got... Huh? The sh- I always think about the shower one when I think yeah. of that yeah. movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. In the extendo version. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But this one has, I mean, there's a good amount of practical effects work, mm-hmm. um, but it's augmented, it seems, a lot by Definitely. CG. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, and I don't know how we feel about that. <sighs> I mean, what? What? Uh, I like that the one girl get it, got her head like uh, uh, bisected the by the right. shovel, and then her head that slides would be- forward. I, the, the slide down is the best part. Yeah, but that's the a bottom of the body. CG the augmentation. Like, yeah. It is to it make is. that happen. You couldn't do that anyway. Yeah, else yeah. Else. Ah, you could. No, but it would, it's her head. That's her. her yeah. The actress. Right. They just mapped her face yeah. on. But the, she is not the first head to be bisected. In the uh, like that has happened in the practical age but, before. The look is going to be obviously a lot different. Yeah, I'll give you that. I just I don't know, that one made my just a little nauseous just because it the, through the mouth of it yeah, made me yeah, feel real yeah. icky. So I that one that one when they kept cutting back to I was like oh come on are we done yet like I feel like it just, <laughs> yeah, I thought we were done and they just kept going back to it. I don't yeah. mind it 
for this one because uh, there's certain things you're like, all right, I don't think they could have accomplished what they wanted to if it was all practical. Mm-hmm. That you kind of have to do some digital in this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is 2009, so it does look a little you know, early and maybe a little cheapish. But I mean, this the budget on this was only 14 million dollars. No way. Yeah, yeah 14. It was, wow. Yeah, it was very cheap. Right? It looks really good given it's it yeah, that cheap. Yeah, and there's famous think, people in it. Right. So you wouldn't like, think 14 million. Right. So I give them credit for that. Well, they went and this shot. This movie must like, have made a shit ton of money. It then, did. Huh? It did fairly well. Yeah, it did 100 think, million, yeah. I think, total just in theatrical. Yeah. God so who you. knows what like yeah. that video did for him. Right. Um, but they, it looks like they, you know, because they were on a limited budget, they shot in real life places. That's kind yeah. of a thing that I take away from this movie. Right. It's like everything feels like it's not a set. I mean, like it's a real supermarket. Yes. It's the streets of the town. No, they did. It, you know, they shot like, in Pittsburgh a lot for a lot of this stuff or in real mines in real small towns. So, yeah. A lot of that is practical. They didn't go to mm-hmm. Vancouver to shoot uh, the interiors for anything. Yeah, it's all, and it feels yeah. legit. And I yeah. think that adds to the atmosphere because it just feels like so many movies, you know, cheat it in some way. But yep. this does actually feel like you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, being in 3D also kind of adds that kind of spatial. Where you're like, yep, it feels like we're really in this in this place. Yep. Um, but in this one, um, during this party sequence, um, Tom... Um, I think there's like a whole thing set up where like his friends leave him, right? Yeah. Uh, Axel takes the girls and escapes and Tom is left in the mine. And so he confronts Harry Warden. Yeah. And as Harry Warden's about to kill him, uh, the sheriff shows up and they shoot him and the blood gets on Tom and he experiences trauma a traumatic event that is going to you know alter his this is so this is the so he's got a double trauma right right he's got responsible for what happened in the mine and he goes back there for a party night and there's the serial killer who blames him yeah right shows back up and then he gets the guy's blood all over his face and this breaks his brain and pretty yeah pretty (laughs) much and wait and who is the sheriff that that shot uh, Harry Warden as he was running off in the mine. Oh, this was great. Tom Atkins. Yeah. And Tom Atkins had not been in a theatrical movie that I could remember oh, since yeah. like the 1980s or early 90s. Really? And to see Tom Atkins, it was like, oh, man, this is great. They said, I think, because obviously uh, Farmer and Lucy are big fans and they're in. Right. Uh, I think Atkins must live in the in uh, in the Philadelphia. I hope or Pittsburgh. It makes sense for him. Yeah. Or they're, they're like, well, somewhere in out. Pennsylvania. Yeah. So they're like, yeah. And he has been in because he they re-recruited him for Drive Angry. Yes, he was great in that, too. Yeah. Where he and delivers I, the same line. Everybody calm, calm down or yeah. God something. God damn it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone uh, stand I, down. I, God okay. damn it. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't both the trailer for this and for Drive Angry have scenes of him turning to camera and saying a line. I'm pretty Probably. sure both of them did. Oh yeah, because you got to put him in the trailer. Yeah, like yeah. Tom he, back. He, he's made for trailer moments. Like you know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I mean the guy's a, a legend for all the stuff he did with John Carpenter and yep. Creep Show. Is and there like, anyone? In the, the horror creeps. community, more beloved. Like I've never heard a ba- anyone say they don't like Tom Atkins. You know what I'm right. saying? Like yeah. right. universally heard, beloved. Yeah, I never heard anyone say a bad word about him. No, mm. everyone never, agrees he's iconic. I've never really seen him play a. Well, I mean, I guess a villain part. You know, like a Creep Show, <laughs> the dad. He's yeah. hateable. You know, whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. There's like this groundswell of appreciation for Tom Atkins, and I think now that he's older, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's still working. But I think they didn't they put him in. Was he in Trick? Oh, let's I think see. he was we'll also. Out, I think yeah. they also because they got back movie. together <laughs> again for Trick, and yeah. so I think they put him in it. I'm still but, curious about Trick, just based on the premise of it. But what is? I don't know anything about this movie. It's, what is it's, it's a Halloween, Halloween killer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is in it, Colin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there yeah. you go. And yeah. But it didn't go Jamie to theaters. Kennedy is in no. This? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, that. Kind well, of there goes all my interest. Omar Epps is the star of it, I believe. Yeah. We got some Scream Two cred there. No, the the other the deputy right is Bingo O'Malley. He's the deputy. So this is another like you know casting thing. We're gonna put Tom Atkins and Bingo O'Malley together in in scenes. Bingo O'Malley has also been added to the Saturday Night Free oh, Show bingo. Wall of Fame because um, he was in Creep Show. Okay, uh, I believe he was Jordy Verrill's dad. Gotcha. Okay, in Two Evil Eyes, he <laughs> was movie. he was Ernest he was Adrian Barbeau's husband. Okay, yeah, the, the yes. dead one, like the one. Yeah. Who was yes. on the, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was bingo uh, that was the last time we talked about oh, it. Okay, uh, okay. The show, and then he was My Bloody Valentine 3D. There so we go. again, the 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 Pittsburgh, uh, you know, yes. George Romero connection there. There it is. Um, so they're the official demo, I guess, of the past, right? And yeah. uh, now we cut to the future, 10 years later. Mm-hmm. and Where everyone looks 
basically the same. Basically they put the a little same. beard on Kurt Smith and like, look, time has passed. Yeah, he's the cop Wait, now. Axel's you knew he the... was young before because he had a short sleeve t-shirt over a long sleeve t-shirt. Right. That's how young he was. A, a little beanie, yes. some long hair. Yeah. It's like, oh no, he's grown up since then. Yeah, but I, and to be honest, when I first saw the movie, I'm like, he still looks a little young to be the chief of police. They yeah. all, yeah, they all look, <laughs> still look very young. Everyone like, in this town, though, is either 20 or 80. Like, yeah. they're like, <laughs> right. like, it's all old men or young, these young kids that went to school together. That's it. There's like no one in between. But this actually, they're all people who came, who like uh, came back because they failed in life elsewhere. <laughs> yes. And they so went there back was to the a hometown. whole generation where that didn't. <laughs> like that they're missing and then like all the youngins came back and now they will start the new ones yep. the new yeah but yeah. this was an interesting dynamic because the, because they had these older uh characters they are able to ca- cast like these older actors like kevin, cool. kevin ties in this movie yeah. you know who i'll always remember as the uh uh bar owner of the double deuce yes right <laughs> in roadhouse right. but um, wow prescient yeah <laughs> since they're doing that again yeah but they ended up, uh, you know, so there's like the, there is like the older guard and the younger guard actors in it, which I think mm-hmm. is also kind of, you know, uh, cool to have. Um, and I guess um, Tom's character returns, right? Tom Hanniger returns after uh, mm-hmm. many years absent. Yes. His father has died mm-hmm. and his family owns the mines that support this town. Mm-hmm. So he's come back to sign away his... Uh, his signing away to sell it off. To Much to it. the chagrin of the older characters in town who want Bingo O'Malley like just <laughs> like, yeah, fuck you Hanniger and punches him like, yeah. straight out in a bar. It's this old yeah. dude like boxing. And they have a real hard time yeah, holding this 80 year old man back. <laughs> it's great. This is a vigorous old man. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you do you, that's why you do the part when you're Bingo <laughs> right. O'Malley. Yes. Like, like, oh, I get oh, to I gotta punch, punch the, dude. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. punch Jensen Ackles in the face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I don't, I kind of, I'm on Jensen Ackles' side on this like I would sell that shit off and be gone. I don't want to be responsible for this. No, you I'd fucking be gone. kidding me? I'd be like, sign it off. Give me whatever millions I'm going to get out exactly. of this. Exactly. I'm leaving. I know. I was like, they're, I was like, they're villainizing. It's not like he said he was going to close it. He just said he was going to sell it to somebody right. else. He just didn't want it to yeah. be his problem, which I, think, I don't see a problem no, with. No, I have like, no problem with this. And then Sarah is just like, you can either uh, uh, you can either keep it and, and you know, and uh, be responsible for it, or you can keep running away. I'd be like, I'd be fucking running yeah, away. Yeah, I, I had, There's no reason for him to stick. He's got so much fucking trauma in this. Exactly. Place. Why stick around? Yes. And, and even if he didn't and have look trauma. Look what happens when he does. <laughs> even if he didn't have trauma in his mind, if he doesn't want to run the business, he should sell it. Right. That's how yeah. business fucking works. Like this, Just but this town is so ass backwards. And so well, was, the town yeah. is doing the, the like. <laughs> Right now, if the if you know it keeps everybody employed and it's owned by a family interest who knows all the people, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and you're going to sell it to this corporation, and God knows what they're going to do in the future, right? But so fucking blame it's him. It's going to yeah. be well, it's his decision ultimately yeah. to sell. It's to his sell decision to sell to a. Um, I think I've been or watching too much su- Succession, <laughs> so I'm getting it. So I'm, I'm in that mode. It's like no, if he sells it to them, he's fine. It's their decision to do whatever they want with it after that. So blame them. Yeah, because they worked that into the script like they've, they're gonna keep you on he says to them right mayor, yeah. you know but yeah. it's like for how long three months he's yeah. not wrong yeah. there it's yeah. like the term of the contract like good like right. everything you find they come in it's like uh yeah you're all laid off sorry yeah um so tension right mm-hmm. is tension. Uh, happening there and then um and also uh there's a rekindling of romance uh or is there i don't know it's like tom <sighs> is back and he's like i'm gonna sell the mine but he changes his mind because of Sarah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I don't, it doesn't feel like a rekindling of romance, more so of, of, of just feeling uh, feeling a loss that they both had at a certain mm-hmm. point. I don't know if there's romance at all within that. We're just told that it, that they're you know he was the love of her life. Yeah, um, I don't know that I necessarily feel it in the performance. I don't. It's in the writing, but it's yeah. just right. I don't know if it's conveyed. Um, Not everyone's pretty cold on that level, as far as I'm concerned. Like how they feel personally it is only agitation that i feel between all of these characters mm. i Friction. think it's a lot of just unfinished business between yeah. them because like i mean if my boyfriend just up and peaced out after a group tragedy you know that we right. went through and then didn't see him for 10 or hear from him for 10 years that's what's kind of implied is that like he didn't really break things off he just left he just yeah. left like yeah. that would leave you severely traumatized right, like yeah. yeah and so that's what i think they yeah. all feel rather than any rekindling he's poking at their it. trauma yeah. and he's getting right, activated yeah. 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 So let me ask you this. Is the reason that he didn't attend the funeral, like, because we find out 
late in the movie that he's been in a mental institution. So did he escape? Has he? J- did he just get out? I know he's on. He's on. Has meds. he been in a mental institution for the past ten years? Right, seven years technically. But I think he. I think he got out. And there's nothing that maybe says this, but I think he got out legitimately just because he has pills that he's trying. Mm-hmm. But for all I know, he's taking pills that up his craziness and make him go into because he takes the pill just before things yeah. happen in this it's movie. It's his power yeah. up, right? Yeah, just <laughs> like, like ah, in Ricky O, it's like instead of Mike and Ike's, this guy has he, legit pills. Uh, that power yeah, actually, him up, yeah. meds. So, but yeah. it seems like he's trying to to subdue something inside of him mm-hmm. as we see him taking pills. Yeah, there's um the killer strikes again now of course you know timed with i think actually the killer does the killer strike before he arrives in town maybe not he arrives in town goes to a, a motel mm-hmm. yeah and <laughs> yeah. yeah that is the first time i think the killer comes back yeah, yeah. and uh because uh todd farmer is in there with um the actress is betsy rue betsy rue mm-hmm. yeah um irene yeah yeah mm-hmm. who irene. was present at the party mm-hmm. at the beginning and so this uh, scene... Well, and her and Kerr Smith were dating back then. Yes. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, this, this work gets confusing because they all like partner swap. So that yeah. could be why she's yeah. a target, the first yeah. target of the, yeah. the re- right. re- you know, Harry Warden Returns, mm-hmm. I guess is what, you know, yep. um, the minor shows back up. Yep. So there's this scene, right? The scene. <laughs> the scene. The scene. If you have seen My Bloody Valentine, where Betsy LaRue performs a, like, extended uh, slasher chase sequence. Fully naked. Mm-hmm. And the likes in of heels. Which have, in heels. The likes of which have not been seen since uh, 10 to Midnight, maybe? Oh. Uh, Oh, as the, as the naked, naked slasher, naked, chase naked slasher, yeah, yeah. Uh, a chase around yes, a van. That that's happened true. In that that's one. that was a very naked slasher scene. That was a very too, naked yep. slasher scene. Oh, I yeah. need to rewatch Ten to Midnight. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I, I'm overdue I, I for a rewatch. Out, like, I need to rewatch. Yeah. It. it's for jerking yeah. off. Yeah. Jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> the knife's his penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, and that's the, there's a dildo on a drill in that yeah, movie, folks. Just so you know, in case you want to go revisit, go listen to our review. Then you get to hear Charles Bronson talk about it and wave it around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the the idea, you know, like, I don't I know now, like, nudity is not really uh, a thing in modern movies. And you keep reading these articles mm-hmm. that say that, like, you know, younger audiences uh, really don't like it. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's a kind of a cheapness or something like that. But to the nudity? Yeah. Yeah. yeah more so. I think. Yeah. yeah I read that same thing. Yeah. Where just like more. They said it makes them uncomfortable and that they feel like it's everywhere. Yeah. It's not yeah. A thing. They're, they're, they're not going there for that. That's not something that. Right. Would, Tempt them or I wonder. Them I wonder if that's just because they're overexposed to it with the growing up with the internet. I mean, yeah, Maybe. this could be the pendulum you know? swing back in the yeah. other direction. It's like it's been such a thing for so long, right? Um, that you know they're pulling away from it. Mm-hmm. Possible, but the the, I mean, to have this scene in this movie, I think was it's a, it's like a genius stroke of you know because yeah. you have don't say stroke, <laughs> <laughs> but you have the. Um, the slasher element, the gore sequences are, you know, mm-hmm. are, are well done, you yeah. know, um, and it's a remake. And then you have this and you have, you know, your uh, cast of whatever the, from the WB. Right, the Young Ingenues. Yep. And then the sequence is like the thing that you remember if you've seen this movie. It's the one with the naked girl like running around, you know, right. in the parking lot of the truck stop mm-hmm. or whatever. for a long time. For yeah. a long Probably time, how that having full goes. conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's like an acting thing. You know, yeah. it's like uh, I don't know that you ever really forget that she's naked. It definitely makes her seem more vulnerable. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, just ooh, yeah, yeah. A brave... is, imagine if she if she <laughs> took a spill in that gravel drive oh. in that parking lot, just like ugh. the road yeah. rash. Yeah. Ooh, brave move which might have been good like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but man yeah and like and in like really tall heels this whole all this yeah. whole time too running oh, yeah. around oh my Hats god for her. this actress yeah she yeah. apparently committed. they tried it with a sheet at one point where uh-huh. she would like before uh-huh. she went out to, to confront Todd Seems Farmer more dangerous. and everything well right and they said it just wasn't fucking working she's yeah. like you know what just let me do it naked yeah. so yeah, God bless mm-hmm. her. And now you you know like uh, the, the, like that scene in Reanimator. Yeah, right. It, right. Yeah. Same, it, it, <laughs> yeah, you remember the movie, and this is because I've been thinking like in years since. It's like you go see other slasher movies. 
but they don't have uh, like Drive Angry, for instance. I mean, it has a scene that comes close right. in in its ridiculousness. I think that's more ridiculous. <laughs> okay, it's more ridiculous, but I don't know that <laughs> the hotel sex room. Yeah, scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. one's pretty With nuts. The taser, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. these are the things that I guess you recall <laughs> about those movies that yeah. make them stand out. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but she is killed by um, the the miner, mm-hmm. yes. and we're like, oh boy. Harry Warden is back in mm-hmm. town. Now, how's that possible? Well, we did see him run off in a mine, mm-hmm. and we haven't seen him since. So yeah. we don't think or know that he, maybe he's died, maybe he hasn't. I don't know. He ran off, the cops chased after him. That's all we know from mm-hmm. the 10 years prior. And for Jensen Ackles, he's, you know, prior to the, the miner showing up, he's taking his pills. We're hearing the woof, woof, woof of his blood pressure <laughs> right you know, on, on the soundtrack mm-hmm. album or the soundtrack movie soundtrack. And then um, there's another scene where he goes down to the mine because he's going to go talk to the foreman and say, I'm not selling. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And um, he goes down to the mine and in the mine, he's attacked by Harry Warden. And you're like, well, how could Harry Warden be down here? Uh, Harry, Which you're not thinking when it first happens, right? But there is that that mirror scene We're, with with them on the either side of the cage. Yeah, yes, that does give you that 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 is them telling you what is happening right there. You don't realize it until later, but that is them telling you what is going on. That he actually is Harry Warden. Harry Warden. Because yeah. I'm sitting there going like, well, okay, who locked him in the in the uh, right? You have cage. to right. You got to look at these things and be like, all right, he is locked in a cage at a certain point. And that is how they find him. So how mm-hmm. do you get there? Right. Which is the one I didn't remember going. I'm like, all right, how do they explain that one? Yeah. In the end? Mm-hmm. But I, I like that they did. Yeah, they did. I don't necessarily like the lever. Whatever. <laughs> that was the part I was side eyeing. It's a, a techni- little bit too. Yeah, it's yeah. a little technical, and it's a wider shot. And yeah. It, and I'm just like, okay, sure. You get away with it. That's yeah. fine. And I won't nitpick at you for that one. But yes, he does end up locked in there and he does end up quote unquote getting attacked. And then the guy he was down there with gets his chest pickaxed open and everything. So and and then after that, the whole group of the other miners who have heard that a ruckus is happening have come down and found him, found the dead body, found Jensen Eccles in a cage, mm-hmm. and I mean it goes from there. But the so, suspicion has started. Uh, yeah. On, on him yeah. because he's returned and the murders are happening, mm-hmm. but he's got an alibi. He was locked in a cage. Uh-huh. So then it becomes, well, is it, can it possibly be Harry Warden? We have to right. start eliminating our suspects, mm-hmm. right? And the suspects are clearly going to be Axel and uh, Tom. Mm-hmm. We've seen the original movie. We're like, right. uh, it mm-hmm. could be Axel, right? Mm-hmm. But so what red herrings do they do to kind of direct you toward Axel this time around? I don't, do, do we get... The Axel stuff I feel like happens later on in the movie where we start suspecting. Yeah, him. I guess like what's his biggest crime of being just being like obsessive about it, like, obsessive about it, but also that he is he is having an affair. Outside yeah. Of yes. It. Yes. Um, so he's already got a secret. Yeah. So he's already yep. got a secret. He has a reason. I mean, uh, there have been lesser reasons. And that the affair happens at the people. abandoned house. Right. It is at the yeah. abandoned house, isn't it? Oof. Yeah, because she's like, why can't we go to a motel or something? He's right. like, well, they'd see my car parked out front. And it's like, yeah, because you're having an affair while you're on the clock, too, mm-hmm. yeah. sir. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Making, making those government yeah. dollars. Yeah, exactly. My taxpayer money is going so that <laughs> this guy affair. can fuck his affair <laughs> on <Yep>. the clock. <laughs> and apparently she's pregnant. Yep. That's the yeah. Valentine's Day yeah. gift that, a... that he gave her. Why did she think that was good news? <sighs> Given the context of their relationship? If you're in an abandoned house with your affair partner and you're going to say, I'm pregnant. Not... Just think about how that looks yeah. <laughs> in the outside. Yeah. You know? and, and his like, immediate reaction should have been, what? Yeah. <laughs> but no, he gives her a side eye as she walks away and they yeah. cut away from the scene. I'm like, yeah. I know, I want to know more about this yeah. and how he reacts to it. Yeah, because what's he going to do? Like, but he should be thinking him... about that in every scene that follows. Yes. You know, but that also, like, would he would he result revert to murder in order to get rid of her? Right. Yeah. Maybe if she was, I don't know how much later she's a target. Maybe if she had been a target soon afterwards, right. yeah. more yeah, suspicion that would have been put on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that you're right. Yep. Probably just because of that, just because of his look. So that mm-hmm. maybe if they'd moved that up a little bit, they could have put more suspicion on him. Yeah. But they do. There's that. I think that's his main reason is just to for the affair. But why would he? But for attacking other people, he would really have no reason to right. attack Jensen Eccles in the mine and kill a dude. Right. Like mm-hmm. right off that bat. He wouldn't be driven so nuts by the return of his wife's ex-flame mm-hmm. to just immediately go into a killing spree. Mm-hmm. 
that, unless he's nuts. Un- unless he's un- unless he's nuts, or unless he's the sheriff from the fucking Prowler. I was gonna right. say I was gonna say where it's unless it's Wolf of Snow Hollow and the villain is the sheriff. Like right, the sheriff yeah. is really the one terrorizing everyone. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a, a, a slippery legal slope here because we find out that uh, Tom Atkins and Bingo O'Malley. Oh no, sorry, and Tev- Kevin Ty. Yeah. Back in the day, they're like, we know that Harry Warden's dead. Mm-hmm. Right, because right, we right. followed him out after you know the mine collapse, and we shot him dead and buried him in it. The yeah. of Curse Smith was just lingering behind a curtain. Yeah, like, oh I'll my tell God. you a story. <laughs> now, how does he know? Yeah, and this is like the thing. It's like so no prosecutions hey, but, but ever I, happened but for this no, vigilante. But I think it's justice. one of those things, like because he's the sheriff now. It's, it's a cop like, secret, right, right? It's like when the the president gets informed about Area Fifty One when yeah. he becomes president. When like, you become this a is cop in this town, is... you get told about the Harry Warden. Right. Yeah, I think so. Just for you know, just so you know, it's what bonds you all. Yeah. Secret. Yeah. Right. This way, nobody can tell on anybody else because exactly. you all know the shit that's going to get you all in trouble. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah. he's he's just like telling the truth, and he's just like, "You guys shot Harry Warden, and you buried him. Like he's <laughs> fucking justice. dead." Justice. Yeah. Yeah. And so their the next move is like, "Well, let's go find that grave and prove to us all that Harry Warden is dead." And so they head off into the woods, and what do they find? An empty grave. An empty dun, dun, grave. Dun, dun. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and I like that the sheriff's like, "I'm going to have to get statements from you guys." Um, right. so the, uh, they end up, um, yeah. Cause I mean, that's going to mean that they're going to get, uh, officially prosecuted. So they all kind of wander yeah, away yeah. from that scene. Like, Oh man, we're going to jail. Right. Um, which gives motivation to as even as old as they are to bingo <laughs> and Tom Atkins that maybe they are killing people to not have this come back at them. Or at least maybe it was before, but they're also they're eighty year old men at this point. Yeah. So, but hey, Bingo can throw a punch, <laughs> so he could be. Right. So he could right. be. Who knows? Um, yeah, because the murders wouldn't save the mine. I assume they would, you know, so, as a motivation for right. red herrings purposes or whatever. Um, so the mayor is targeted. Is he the mayor or whatever? The the Kevin Ty character. Yeah, what is he? I thought that he called him mayor, but maybe he also it- works at the mine. Yeah. But he's at the Don't mar- remember. Oh, wait, Ben. What's his name? Ben in the movie? Like, is he the foreman at the. Maybe he's the foreman. I think yeah. he's the foreman. I think that's why. Maybe that's why he's got a nice big mansion he has mm-hmm. and everything. That house is the most. dope. It's a big house. Yeah. Like, it, that fancy fireplace. It, this looks like something you would see in, like, an Argento movie. Like, a fancy draw. Mm. This is a drawing room. Argento like, does love, is, yeah. love a nice house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As we've. Yeah. We're, we're two evil eyes. Go yeah. watch it. Go listen to our past episodes <laughs> yeah. about Argento's houses. <laughs> Well, he uh, Argento's he, Parade of Homes tour. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. this is Saturday Night Freak Show. What yeah. was the tracked movie? It's like uh, um, Terror Track. Terror Track. Yeah. Argento's Terror Track. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, of his all coming his soon. Houses, yep. Yes, um, he has one of the the like the pop out 3D moments he that does. I always remember mm-hmm. from the movie. It's great. It's just out of you know Ooh. like. I mean, it's one Not of those. Not zombie. Have we seen an eye scene? So <laughs> yeah. long. It wasn't. Yeah, we didn't get any slow moves into an eyeball. There uh, at the end of everyone, there's usually a big push that yeah. pops something out. We got an eyeball at the very beginning of the movie. Yes. And this one, we get a pickaxe going through the back of his head. Mm-hmm. And what does he go? Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> the, yep. Yep. And poor Tom Atkins. He oh, he also gets. Uh, Ooh, through the bottom of the jaw. That was good. Oh, that was good. That was good. I yeah, like that. Yeah. Jaw getting ripped yeah. off. That was yeah. nice. Although yeah. how he knew somebody was in the house. He just shows up. By the way. Cop instinct. So, <laughs> right. If you're going to knock on someone's window, don't act Ooh. like a fucking fool and be like, Bleh! yeah, someone's in the house. That's my like, least favorite horror movie jump scare. The yeah. friend popping up at the window. Let's fo- stop fucking doing no, it. No, because uh, somebody would come it. up and go. Like. I mean, like, hey, yeah. <laughs> if nothing else, they'd right. knock or be a little quieter and not so fucking jumpy. I mean, Smile did a little bit of a different twist on that last year, and so that I'm okay with. Yeah. But yeah, if it's literally just someone like benignly knocking on your window, don't make it a jump scare moment. Right, it's, yeah. We're tired of it. Yeah. Well, it amps up all this stuff, uh, you know, for punctuation, which I think is also that thing that kind of separates, um, you know, like movies that have a budget, even if it's low, from. Mm-hmm. You know, all the filmmakers who aspire to be filmmakers and making stuff on a lot because every time like uh, Harry Warden kills somebody, he ends up knocking him into something and sparks fly through the, 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 the picture frame. Beams you know? break and rocks fall. It's like, yeah, people are always throwing tables aside and do it. I mean, Kurt oh Smith really does. Like, action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite. The, there's some good, okay, I know you said the love triangle chemistry was not good, but the chemistry between Kerr Smith and Jensen Ackles That's is better. really good. That's better. It's really, I really like their one-on-one scenes when they're going head-to-head with each other, but when they're doing the interrogation and he's, 
and he's like, Sarah settled. And he's like, say it again. Like, Sarah yeah. settled. And then he throws that table into the wall. <laughs> Love it. He's, like he was really looking forward to that. He's like, oh, yeah. throw a fucking table. Yeah. Yes. That's the stuff you want in a roll. Right. Yeah. The, um, I want to say that the, well, no, Sarah eventually becomes like a victim, well, not a victim, but a, like she's in, she becomes a target of the, the kill. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, knowing that Axel, or no, sorry, that Tom is the, is under that suit, right? Mm-hmm. We assume then that the intended target was Megan, even though he wouldn't have any knowledge of, it's right. just a horror, it's a horror right. suspense scene. They're in the grocery store late at night and- the killer shows up. Yes. yes. Um, yeah, he doesn't necessarily, I can't remember if he takes any swings at her, but he uh, he does, but he also like just kind of beats her up a little bit. Like yeah. he would like to disable her in order to go after Megan, it seems mm-hmm. like is the main purpose there. Or he's trying to kill them both. I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I mean uh, maybe. opportunity, there were a couple yeah. swings like, that didn't, you right, know. Right. That just didn't land <clears throat> on, you know. But what is his motive luck? to kill Megan? Knowing it's Tom. I think he's trying to fuck with um axel okay Could to be. make it or to make it look like it well no that doesn't work with the well, well i mean well the megan thing does because yeah, she, yeah. she's pregnant with his kid right. that would end up right. but it all depends on how but he would deliver but all how did he know that he wouldn't know end. that it, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know he wouldn't he wouldn't know that i, I so, agree yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and he wouldn't but, know that she was having an affair yeah either. He, he hasn't been around he doesn't yeah. know any of this stuff yeah so uh, then the target would have been Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, yeah, yeah. But why? Yeah. Well, if, if I mean, he's obviously not in his right mind. Yeah, he is. The point, he yeah. thinks he is mind. Harry Warden. I right. guess that's what's that's going what he on. Is, yeah. right? He's killing people. Yeah, it's yeah. a psycho situation yes. where the other personality takes over, and then yes. he believes mm-hmm. that he is this uh, Harry Warden, just doing what Harry would do. You know, right? Yeah. yeah the last we saw Harry, just murdering people. Mm-hmm. That's what Harry would do. Um, she survives. Megan is killed mm-hmm. at the grocery store. And then it seems... Well, and her body is found behind the dumpster. This is important for later. Yeah. Um, and a, what does it say? Be mine forever or yeah. something like that? Above her body and her heart's already cut out. In a matter of, what, five minutes since she was it's, pulled through that window? Cool. Yeah. Well, um, we got to pick axe and get those ribs apart real yeah. quick. Yeah. But then paint and stage. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's yeah. really good yeah. finger painter. Yeah. Like, exactly. it's really, it's really uh, very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Very clear. Yeah. Like, no drips or smudges yeah. or anything. Mm-hmm. He does it very well. Yeah. It's almost like a set decorator did it. I guess the killer did go to um, the uh, 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 Axel's house first, right? And killed the, right. the, the, the housekeeper. Killed the yes. housekeeper just so we get the... Uh, he was going after Sarah again, maybe? But she wasn't home. Then maybe. he goes to yeah. the and grocery then, store. Yeah. Right. He's oh, going after Sarah, maybe. and then he saw the kid, and he's like, that kid's too creepy. I don't want to be here. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, I'm going to kill the, the housekeeper and put her... So we have the, uh, a the, body, dryer kill. the body in a dryer yeah. kill from the first movie. Which I like that they brought it in in a different way instead of just making it a laundromat again. Sure, yeah. Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. But, but it also get... felt like, let's add another body here. I don't think if, I go could for fit the a body kid. in Go my... for the kid. Go for the kid. In fact, like, they should have. Kill the kid. They, they teased like they were gonna, and then they didn't. So. Right. Because that kid's evil. You can't fit a body in your in your, in your your dryer. I don't think so. Don't so think it had so. to we be a laundromat one, because those are commercial size. Yeah, we could fit you in a dryer. I probably could fit in a dryer. You're small enough. Yeah. Um... Let's find out. <laughs> they also pay homage to... So the end of all of this type of uh, classically plotted slasher movie eventually whittles down. You've got uh, the the main girl, the final girl, mm. and the killer. Um, this one, uh, it, it basically, it brings in that... Or it tries to accentuate... He did it. No, he did it. Yeah. You know, Axel's talking to her on the phone while she's in the car with Tom saying, you got to get out of that car right now because it's him. And Tom's in the car saying, "You uh, trust me, I found something at the house. He's got a whole stash of uh, Valentine's, uh, you know, boxes. I mean, but he didn't even tell her that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, but, so but that's the, why he was taking her there, right? Was right like, Look, well, it's evidence. Right. No, he was going to show her all that and do that. But just. Oh, so he did know about the affair. Because he he'd been to the house. Right. Because he'd been to the house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But also like. This would have—I don't think this would have been a hard decision. I think you believe your husband, who you've yeah. known and lived with for the past ten years, <laughs> over the one guy who just came back and is giving your you ex. very your ex giving you very little information yeah. about what's going on. I, no, trust me. Like, what? Uh, who are you this talking? This is It's none of your fucking business, <laughs> yeah. dude. He keeps asking her questions. It's like, I, who? You don't get to know. Like. This is marriage ending business. If they all survive, they're still right, getting yeah. divorced because, oh, yeah, oh my God, done. I've been married to you for 10 years and you're going to take your one time ex-boyfriend side who 
dumped you right, yeah. in yeah. the middle a of a trauma. You're a lot like, of trust issues here. Yeah. I mean, she deservedly so for her, I guess, because yeah. she knows about the affair, although she treats Megan pretty fairly for knowing about the affair. Right. And almost too much. Yeah. So yeah. She's like, yeah, come help yeah. me. It'll be all right. I'm just like... Especially those questions Megan asks. How dare you? The, yeah. like, prying questions about right. her marriage. Yeah. Where do you get... I'm, she's fishing for information, and that's right. not so cool. you guys going to be together? Right? Yeah. yeah. She really is going <laughs> yeah. to get back together uh, with Tom. Doesn't she say, how'd you end up with Axel anyways? And starts yeah. asking, like, oh, and basically a that they don't well, have she says common. one thing. It's like you don't trust him anymore. She yeah. says one thing. It's just like Jesus. Yeah, all right. bold. Dig it. Bold. Yeah. Well, Very she's bold. thinking about the future for her and her kid. Yeah, uh-huh. it's gross. Yeah, we all yeah. care about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Sarah gets free of the car, and then this is where your chase sequence begins. She goes to the house and. Um, I don't remember Harry Warden show up there. She ends up in he the... He does show up the house. You don't remember it because we didn't need it. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't need to go to this house. No. She does find the Valentines, mm-hmm. which right. because it is Kersmith's dad's place, yeah. she finds... I mean, this does set up her distrust of Kersmith because of the affair and everything. Right. But and the closet full of heart boxes yeah, that she opens uh, and they apparently. cascade onto her like a waterfall. Yeah. So our killer is just on a sugar rush. Yeah. Yep. It like was a cool he, 3D moment though. It the was, yeah, because they out. piled up in yeah. front of the like yeah. in front of the lens and everything. Yeah. That was nice. There are nice little touches like that in this. Mm-hmm. Um, they uh, there's a chase scene back to the mine. They mm-hmm. pay homage homage to the scene with the uh, hanging um, like the miner suits. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember how it plays in the first film. I'm not going. I'm going to go back and watch the first one. But it, this good. feels just like. All right, you could have kept walking. Yeah. Like, the, I don't, the staging in this is kind of, again, from the one of the earlier first shots where a nurse walks into a room, <laughs> and it's almost like wide open. There's a, there's a fucking spotlight on mm-hmm. the empty bed. It's not yes. even in darkness. On the empty bed, which she doesn't notice until she, like, turns... Uh, yeah. After checking the IV, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, uh, the staging is not quite great in this movie because right. even earlier in when um, uh, Harry Warden is attacking them in the mine at the very beginning of the yeah. movie, they're <laughs> they're facing him. They're facing him. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, and he they're like looking them. right fucking at him, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you you walk? He walks past them to kill the other guy. Right. Like, how do you not see them uh, right there? It was the movie. It was like a T Rex. It, it, it must be Harry no, Warden. No. <laughs> No, I mean, he is wearing a mining mask, so yeah. maybe yeah, his visibility right. is limited. But if he could see the other guy, he could see them. Right. Uh, yeah. It's a little the ge- the it's the horror movie geography that is always a little sketchy. Have you ever seen those montages going around of all the clips in the High School Musical movies like that, where characters are like should be seeing each other, but there's like a prop <laughs> wall between them, and it's just like the characters are doing all the stage oh, kind boy. of stuff of pretending like right. you can't see them. <laughs> but when it's all lined up in a montage like that, oh my god, it makes those movies look so cheap. Oh, like. The lessons. It's fascinating. Don't, don't 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 do that. Don't do that in your low budget. No, because yeah. it makes it feel like a stage play. Then it makes it feel not theatrical. Right. Like you you're know? choosing not to see it, right? Then you can't see it, right? Yeah. 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 Um, the climax in the movie puts the three uh people against each other. Sarah's got the gun. Who's she gonna shoot? There, you, this, say, this you this shoot is, him. No, shoot him. This Divorce is the cutting, this material is the cutting again. The baby in half, right? <laughs> yep. The one who says, no, I don't hurt the baby. Yeah. And the one who's going, no, good, fucking cut it in half. But then this time it's like Kurt Smith, because uh, she's got a gun on both of them. And he's like, shoot us both. Fuck, mm-hmm. you'll be safer that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just like, oh, yes. She, even after the revelation, because we do get a revelation at this right point. Right there, right? Because obviously right the way that they explain it to the audience is when confronted, he just blurts out, I think, that. Uh, he's right there. No, the the ev- he gives the evidence about the be mine forever. Right. Yes, like, how would you know that Megan died, and how would you know what was written above her head? Yes. Because yeah. Jensen Ackles body. says, yes. you can't trust him. Look what he did to Megan, and d- didn't it match her Valentine? And it's, he shouldn't right. know any of that. So, so in a logic bubble, mm-hmm. Tom disappears, and Harry Warden appears. Right? He's, uh, he yes. can't get out of this yes. one, so Harry Warden. And then we get the flashbacks that show us. Like uh, it has been him all along. Yeah. yeah. How he locked himself in the you know in the cage yeah. for the alibi. Yeah. I don't. I can't decide if I like this or don't like this. The way that they do this, explain it. Like I. It, it's it, it's a, it's a tough one it's, because yeah. everything kind of hinges on it. it exactly. Like yeah. they have to have it in there. If they right. didn't. There'd be a lot of like, wait, what? How did you yeah. question a lot more of the movie you just watched right. if you didn't have it in right. there? I but, think so. but is that better? Like, would you, uh, if you could go back through, because you can't go back through the movie and just watch it and get that same thing from it unless you do these flashbacks. Yeah, I don't think. I'm just wondering, is there like a more eloquent, eloquent way they could have delivered yes, this information? Is. You know, like, there is do you just have him, you know, like, 
a police conversation back and forth. It's like, yeah, it turns out it was him the whole time, and he locked Something. himself in that cage and just like kind of give the rundown yeah. of. Those I think things. there is a. Uh, I think there's definitely a better way to yeah. do it. I think, but between that and the um, Jensen Eccles seeing yelling that he sees Harry Ward, he's like, mm-hmm. right, he's right behind you. He's, yeah. J- Sarah, yeah. turn around, shoot, and uh, to to you know see the reactions of the other characters, and then Harry Warden, who does show up, walks mm-hmm. right up to Jensen Eccles and then disappears. And either at that moment you're really like, <gasps> or fuck you, yeah, because you feel like you got <laughs> mileage may vary, yes, right. you're just yeah. like, what? Yeah. or confusion. Well, the first one, do it. There was a flashback in that one also, right? To like, when, yes, I think so. Yeah. Or somebody takes a mask off or something like that. Maybe uh, turn around. I can't remember. having Harry Warden had an affair with the guy's mom or something. There's yeah, blood, there on, was there's blood that. Gone on him or something. Yes. Right? Yeah, like Harry, Harry Warden either killed his dad or mom yeah. earlier yeah. on. Didn't I he get blood on him in that one? I think so. Started Axel, the, yeah. yeah. Axel has the flashback of that, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But in this one, it's Tom. Surprise, Tom is the killer. And <laughs> so then he chases them around and he eventually gets shot. He does. Uh, um, there's, fight. there's some. There's some. Uh, a couple cool moments in here that because when he's walking down, they set up a a long tunnel in the in the mine where he's it's lit up by light bulbs and he's walking down and smashing them, mm-hmm. which is a cool effect in itself because everything sparks and everything. But then during those flashes, uh, his figure turns into the miner again, yeah. yes. real quick, real yeah. quick, yeah. which is good, which is cool. Yeah. Even uh, we had a special guest tonight. Uh, my, my my kid mm-hmm. joined us for some of the movie, um, and he and he even saw it and noticed it, which is like, all right, it works. Yeah, yeah the kid yeah. saw it, and you know, then I, it was good. I think a big part of that too is uh, Jensen Ackles' performance. I think he's got yeah. that like lumber and that kind of hunch yeah. that like really trying to mimic. It looks a lot like the original kind of yeah. movement That's of the miner. I wonder if it maybe yeah. is him in the costume. Like maybe he did perform <laughs> yeah. the I think the it, role because of the right. body language. It seems yeah, the it same. does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and they also yeah, and they sh- there's some good stuff with the miner, and I think they shoot him well in this movie. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's very it's very well good, mm-hmm. uh, very was- well shot for the killer, especially like earlier in the movie when he's got like the double pickaxes yes. and he throws one. Mm-hmm. There's a good moment where he gets a, a nice push in. Like pose movie, yeah. like, that looks it did good. Choose Several your fighter, yeah. 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 right? It looked good. Yeah, yeah. I'll give him that. Well, but he does, like you said, he does eventually uh, get shot. Although she, Sarah should have shot him like minutes before. Yeah, yeah. Before Kerr Smith decided to attack him on his own, he should right. have been shot dead right there. But mm-hmm. he gets shot and blown up. He mm-hmm. does and blown away, blown, blown into up. blown yeah. into a pile of rubble. There you right. Go. In which uh, uh, search and rescue does eventually come into the mine yeah. looking for people. Uh, we get a nice point of view shot through a mask as somebody comes upon Jensen Eccles and he's like, uh, hold on, buddy, you'll be fine. And he's like, Ugh. right he through the, the eyeglass. Yeah, right through the eyeglass and, and into the audience yep. right off the screen. Yep. And uh, so everything's uh, uh, to- uh, Axel has been wound- wounded, but he's going to make it. He's- we see him going out on the right. stretcher. Uh, Sarah is going to make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's but still, that marriage is not nope, the marriage. That's dead not. on arrival. Right? Although this is another thing to bond over. I don't know, you, say, uh, <laughs> you murdered my marriage when you thought yeah. about shooting me. Yeah. 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 Well, wait until she finds out in the autopsy that you know Megan was, was pregnant. pregnant. Uh, a, yep. well, Megan was one. pregnant, and there's no okay, and that there's no body of Tom. Yet Kerr Smith is just like he, he's dead. It's yeah, fine. He says, it's like. F- who are you people as as people who, who just let things go like that? And as a police officer, who's just like, yeah, he's dead. It's like, did you see a body? <laughs> no, you didn't. The, the fallout of this movie might be worse than the actual movie. Like, right? all the stuff that's going to come oh, happen yeah, now? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. going to be court cases. Uh, yes. and although most of the people are dead at this point yeah. who would be charged with anything. But the trauma those two are going to have to unpack. Oh so like you said, especially when she finds out she's pregnant, she's going to feel like she's starting to get over it. And then <laughs> another <laughs> blow, you know? Like, yeah, it was yeah. a real dramatic sequel to yes, this that yes. come out it's just all about trauma but there's another scene <laughs> there's another it's not we're not done yet no not done yet. what do we get so uh, yeah they're holding hands like their marriage is gonna make it it's yeah. not um oh. we get the search and rescue trucks pulling yep. away from the mine i have questions about where exactly this is uh how far outside of town are they before the homeboy's popping his helmet off uh, oh, yeah. uh, what? Right, it's just like yeah. he gets twenty feet away from yeah. the people who, uh, for a couple of the people who just who know they that know he what is, he looks like, right? Like, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> our last, he doesn't this go is, running through Main Street. Tom, he yeah. survived. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's so he took that rescue search and rescue miner's outfit. That. I think we could have seen him as the injured person walking away and, and just gotten know. it. Yeah. 
I liked. I, I, I mean, liked it. I he's liked got this crazy look on his yeah, face. That's fine. It's good. It fit it the tone of the movie. Yeah. I guess that you know, he takes the mask off, but we can tell by his expression he's it's he's Harry, Harry Warden. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then he looks at the camera yeah. <laughs> directly and then wanders off, and but I'm like, like, all right, you know. <laughs> but this, do these search and rescue people know they were looking for Jensen Ackles? Mm -hmm. Uh, see, I don't uh, know. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. It I think it would, that would have hinged on, because I think maybe Kurt Smith and Sarah were the only ones who knew. Y okay. Yeah, and he's he like, only he's ones. dead. Yeah, and they're like, he's dead. And, yeah, and no he's one's like, buried in a collapse. Sure. They're there for the, the collapse of the mine. You, just, right? you might want to be mind. like 30 miles away from town before no, you take your helmet off. No, you know? there's a yeah. sequel <laughs> that picks up like two, three hours later where they inform Kurt Smith in the hospital. It's like, we didn't find anybody. Oh, oh, oh Halloween kills? Are you purporting Halloween? Michael Myers is alive. Like, yeah. Harry Warden is alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. My Bloody Valentine 2. They never made one. Uh, My Bloody Valentine to you, but with a... Oh, and, yep. yes. Yeah. They, they made right a, uh, a novelization of the first movie came out. Like, I think the, the director writer of the first yeah. one, like, wrote the novel, like, a couple of years ago. Yes. Like, a year or two ago. Ghoul <laughs> Ghoulish Gary Pullen did the cover art for oh, it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So you can read that. Mm -hmm. um, the soundtrack album for the first one has been remastered. Oh, yeah. We talked we, about that a lot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but this one... I mean, it did well. Mm -hmm. It seemed to kick off, uh, you know, I don't know, Lionsgate used the 3D process again and saw 3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with the same, like, marketing, mm -hmm. sure. uh, oh, yeah. you know, for it. Um, but I don't know. This is, uh, did, it, did it kick off? It was at the end of the remake cycle. Yeah. Yeah. The beginning of the 3D cycle. Yeah. Yeah. It's it like, we'll, we'll got lost your, in yeah, this we'll purgatory. Yeah, we'll let movies die, but we'll take your 3D. In. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. All right. Well, I guess we will tell you whether or not you should watch it, whether we liked it. We're going to go around the table uh, one by one. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, right, thank you, Igor. Thank you, sir. Happy Valentine's Day to you, Igor. <laughs> no, put the hearts away. We don't need them right now. Uh, do you have, Igor? <laughs> well, um, we should probably let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at, or threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. We will um, not be providing you with a P.O. box. We do not want hearts. Yeah. Mail. <laughs> Thank you. It's a dangerous Just send your emoji man. hearts and that's good enough for right. us. Um, MF Matt also wants us to know that Mark McCauley is on the uh, the Hallway of Fame. He was uh, Riggs in this. You remember Riggs? The character Riggs? In I don't this? remember the no, character I, Riggs. I don't remember anybody saying Riggs. He was Sarge in Drive Angry. That makes sense that he would and, be involved. Oh, crap. I think I know who he is. He's got a mustache. Uh, he was also Walter in Wild Things. So he has been in three movies. <laughs> oh, awesome. That Congratulations, we have done. sir. Um, I think he was the foreman in the mine. The one who got killed when he brought Jensen Eccles down? Or No, the or one who sent him down. I'm like, you're not going down there. It's oh, too dangerous. Okay. I know him. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, about tonight's movie, My Bloody Valentine 3D, Jimbo Ice writes in and says, like most horror remakes of the era, it's polished and competent, but lacks the charm and the grit of the original. Lots of CGI pickaxes to the head and an unlikable cast. Still a high watermark for the 2000 slasher remakes, but that's like giving a movie praise for being one of the better scream clones. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Chili Morrison says, hello gang. I just watched this to keep Here. up on your show. And while it was half decent for a modernist slasher, it doesn't hold a candle to the original. One of the highlights of the original that this remake is sorely lacking was a sense of camaraderie between the characters. They all seem like real friends at the first one. Therefore, their deaths mattered to the audience and the other characters. On the other hand, the 2009 version, everyone seemed to hate each other. Yes, we I said agree. that while we were watching the movie. We were like, wow, everyone in this town just fucking hates each other. Like, I mean, yeah, like again, just, it's yeah. all it's all friction and 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 leverage and bullshit and yeah, <laughs> blackmail. And, Lots of blackmail. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I don't ever, even when they were, they were at the beginning when the quote, because there's, uh, there's more people at the beginning as they're having this quote unquote party in the mines, but those are just background characters. Yeah. They're still focused on the three right. and the other ones don't fucking matter. And it doesn't, no one has ever had, no one had a good time 
within the movie at any point no, no, during and, this movie. Nobody had fun. And that original, they're all hyped on the yeah, dance. They're, doing they're going great. out and drinking. They're making food on engines of cars. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, they're, they're That's they're how you know they're real jokes. friends. They're ribbing each other. Yeah. yeah. They're at least felt like these were, I mean, they were Canadian, so yeah. it really <laughs> came that, through. I always think that that's like the, the disconnect between like, you know, well, I guess we're still the modern era movies of this type because you can compare them to how things were in mm -hmm. the 80s. And that is like one of the big differences is Definitely. like in the 80s, people, felt, the characters felt more realistic. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel so cynical yes. and just awful, you know, like right. all the characters in that Friday the 13th. 2009 yeah, remake yep. are just reprehensible people <laughs> Insufferable. you know yep. a house of wax is it's like everybody mm -hmm. you just hate all the characters yep. it's just i don't know i don't know if it's is a, that a moralistic approach so that you're more okay with what happens to them i don't know but i think it's better for your movie if you if States. you don't want bad things yeah. to happen to them yeah. rather right. than yeah. cheering I for agree. bad things right to yeah. i agree i just wonder is this like a more conservative approach to like well if they're going to watch the violent shit, at least make it people who deserve it. Maybe. Is it you know? a way to like Maybe. distance themselves from like, okay, we're Moral making a movie. Yeah. Or we're yeah. going to make them so you don't like them. Yeah. So then it's okay to kill them. Right. Like, oh, exactly. That's, that's what I'm morally thinking. Morally yeah. reprehensible too. Yep. <laughs> um, Jeff Miller says it's a pretty decent movie. Old Tom Atkins line. Everyone stand down. God <laughs> damn it. Gets me every time. And he basically did the exact same thing in drive angry <laughs> before <laughs> Bill Fitchner bobs his way into an explosion. Um, Travis Legler says the 3D uh, hurt his eyes. He was talking, I think we were talking about 3D on a previous episode yeah. uh, last week. We were yeah. saying we we're going to do this. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think Holly said she had some issues with like 3D. Or like back in the past in the 80s, right. the, the projection system was different. Right. And things didn't necessarily align correctly. When well, you guys said, also have like, you, you guys wear glasses, so you have to wear your 3D glasses yes. over your regular glasses yeah. or whatever. So that adds complications to yep. you. Know? Yeah. It makes you feel real cool. <laughs> but they're, they're, it is now like much better than it used to be. Yes. But yeah. Travis said he had a problem with it, um, but he still said it's still got Supernatural star Jensen Ackles. Sean, you should seriously give that show a try. I'm sure I'd like it if I watched it, but now that we have, what, 12, 15, how like many? 17. 17? I think. Oh, I don't know if I can. I only like, wa I've watched like two or three seasons. I mean, I, I would, I, would, I could probably dive in and just have a good time with it, but I wouldn't be able to like, I couldn't do the seventeen. It's a time commitment. Like yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Travis also says uh, it's also got Tom Atkins and some good gory 3D fun. Granted, this is a remake, but it feels much better than the Nightmare on Elm Street remake just a year later. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, episode of that where everyone was just like, fuck you, Sean. Michael Whitaker says, initially, I was a little down on this movie because I don't think it's as good as the original, but as far as trashy slasher movies go, it's pretty good. I give them all credit in the world for making the lead character, the slasher, at the end, and the hero being a wife-cheating scumbag. That takes <laughs> some amount of guts. Yeah. See, even the hero, you know what? That's like, a yeah. great perspective. On that. <laughs> huh. I like that. I had never thought about it that way before. Um, Last week, we watched a movie called The City of the Dead. Adam Kaler uh, wrote in and says, I have a limerick inspired uh -oh. by City oh, of the yes. Dead. Oh, here we go. It is entitled Bill. <laughs> <laughs> there was once a young man named Bill, a burning witch, made his car take a spill. He crawled into town. A knife made him frown. Her cross gave the witches their fill. Love it. <laughs> I'm here for I, I love, freak show movie sweet. inspired limericks. I love it. There we yeah. go. That was I, great. I, I yeah. toast to that. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Uh, Michael Whitaker writes in again and says, can you imagine if this movie, uh, every character had a deep Massachusetts accent and towny attitude? It'd be would, Thanksgiving. It'd be, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be Thanksgiving. And that's what part of what, what made Thanksgiving so delightful was <laughs> the, the authentic, authentic townies of it all. But yes, I would love to see that for City of the Dead. Yeah. Uh, and the week before that, we watched a movie called Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yep. Bill Hainer says my favorite pop culture callback to this film is from Community, in which Joel McHale's character, Jeff Winger, is assimilated into the Glee Club and a pod person like Reveal was hilarious. <laughs> yes, that is episode is so funny what season is that uh, uh season th three episode three? 10 yep. okay uh yeah glee club takes over the school like a body snatcher <laughs> disease and it's hilarious yeah. i think i may have missed that one yeah. I, I tapered off at the end of season three so i may have missed that it's, one. maybe i'll go check it out yeah it's pretty funny uh, Richard Kratzer says, I remember when human faces on dog bodies used to be a big thing, jump scare in horror movies. I kind of <laughs> wish they'd bring it back, but it probably end up being some uncool looking CGI disaster. Yeah, I mean, probably. Probably. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, Action Dude says you finally got around to covering Body Snatchers, one of my all-time favorite sci-fi horror movies. The whole cast is great, but Leonard Nimoy really shines for what he's given to do. Imagine if he could have reached further out from under Spock's shadow, he could have pulled off being a serial killer, a corrupt cop, a creepy politician, or just an everyday person to spectacular dramatic effect in a slice slice of life movie, R.I.P. Nimoy. So the career Zachary Quinto had. Pretty much. Because he went on to play serial killers uh, and, and all sorts yeah, of other things. Of yeah. 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 No, that's true. It, I, I, I do wonder what it's like to be an actor to kind of get pigeonholed that way for in such yeah. an Read epic, iconic way. Find out. Yeah. <laughs> I am and am not Spock. <laughs> um, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, uh, we were talking about the, the glove that he wears. Yes. The bitch so, glove. All right. Yeah. He says it might have been a carpal tunnel glove. That's what I thought. He says his mom wore one, but it looked more like a bowling glove. Yes. It was very leathery. Thing. That was what threw us off. Right. It the didn't carp- look medical. The carpal tunnel glove covers more of the hand. Yeah. yeah. He's right. It does look more like a bowling glove. Yeah. This yeah, one yeah. was just like, it looked like he had to protect that part of his hand and nothing <laughs> that, else. That one inch wide. <laughs> yeah, in case he hit a bone or something yeah. while he was back slapping someone. Whoosh. Uh, Peter Gatt says, in my opinion, the remake Holy Trinity is the fly, the thing, and invasion of the body snatchers. He leaves yeah. out the blob. He says, question, uh, do you think the Leonard Nimoy character was always a pod person, or did he change during the film? I would say always, because he's just based on his yeah. character always just being against the paranoia. He was always trying to convince someone from, the, I think, the, yeah. the very first introduction of the character. To mm-hmm. Hard to tell if that was the character and it just turns more into that, but he's always against whatever paranoia the other characters right. Yeah, but he I like that shows, every time. He exhibits emotion and stuff like that. You know, I get that He is a little more happier he, and laughing yeah, earlier on, yes. Because he, I guess he tries to convince the other people then that he isn't a pod person so he can act like a human which i don't know is with if that's within right. the scope of their abilities because why wouldn't all the then you wouldn't get the that's right. not my wife that's not right. my wife. well, well yeah. let's just say the transition from him as being a regular person to a pod person wasn't that big a leap no. yeah apparently no. if nothing else you couldn't really tell yeah but uh, it's good to it could go either way the Scream Queens podcast says oh. nobody, but nobody goes to pieces, cries, and dies like Veronica Carter. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, she, she's again, great. You get something I from really outer space her. fucking with her, and yeah. she will go melt down. <laughs> I liked her. <laughs> yep. Very good. Uh, DJ Mulka says, I love this movie, plain and simple. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. And Mark Harrison had a question for us because he says, I'm Australian. What's a corn tassel? Oh, oh man. <laughs> Forgot we got it. <laughs> What's a corn um, tassel? Uh, it's the thing on top of a, a stalk of corn. It's for pollination. Yeah. Like to stop the cross pollination of something. I don't know. You have to take it off at a certain point during yeah. the growing process in order for something else right. not to happen. But it's long and stringy, and it like it's like a ponytail on the ear of corn. But it's yeah. silky and stringy, and has a very unpleasant texture. Yeah. And like like rubbery dental it, floss, I guess. Yeah. 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 And they yeah. pay kids to wander through the fields and, and pull, pull them off. They pay yeah. children. Yeah. <laughs> children to wander. Lucky if you get paid. Sometimes you just get told to do it. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you just and, hold the basket and yep. collect it and shit. Yep. And Sometimes it's, your older brothers take you along with, and you don't yeah. get paid shit. Yeah. So Midwest trauma. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. There you go. Things you can only experience in Illinois. Yeah. Well, thank you, each of you, for writing you. in. Mm-hmm. Again, we, we really, it. really do appreciate it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with Colin. Oh did boy. you get your heart broken tonight? On the hot seat. No, actually, I didn't. Okay. Um, I really like this movie. Um, I. It seems like even when I saw it, right, the impression that I have from the 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 total experience of My Bloody Valentine 3D is like, it's like you forgot that the 80s slasher wave ever stopped. Mm-hmm. It's like if they were still making them, it's like unironic. And I guess this is why I also like it's Thanksgiving. Like Thanksgiving yeah. yes, it's because same. both of those have that same feel that they're not bringing anything uh like uh from outside into the slasher movie it's like we're just making another one mm-hmm. we've been making these for 30 years <laughs> yeah. this is just what you do 40 you know, years, for, yeah. 40 yeah. years. sorry yeah. yeah um decades are upon us mm-hmm. and i think for that kind of straightforwardness and obviously you know i'm a fan of slasher movies why i don't know they appeal to me and there's certain ingredients that when you mix them together in a pot it just kind of works this is one where I think that it works. It has the added spectacle of a 3D and a 10 minute nude scene and, uh, you know, uh, the, the gore effects. Um, 
and Tom Atkins, yes. you know, Tom like Atkins. the yeah, cherry on yeah. top. Yeah. Tom Atkins. You know, the cast. Well, I liked all the, you know, like I recognize Kevin Ty and Tom Atkins. And they're like, well, you know, this is uh, like a, a culmination of, you know, bringing all these people back. It was great. Um, that being said, I mean, I do <laughs> recognize that there's a certain cheapness to there the is. movie. I think some of it is the camera system that they employ gives it a um, like almost a shot on video kind of look. Really, because especially when you see some of those sparks later on, mm -hmm. the yeah. explosions, you see the digital yeah. of it because it was yeah. shot in 4K on red cameras. But you see that non-film elements come through. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I mean, ultimately, it's like they're working with the technology that they had to actually capture it, right? Um, the writing is not necessarily great, but it's functional mm -hmm. and it puts everything together in a way that I guess my takeaway was that it was a lot of fun. And this is why I think maybe I like slasher movies, you know, is it as fun if it's not in 3d? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, it would look, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get to that. Okay, okay, okay. It, it would look goofy. Yeah. I think, but <laughs> yeah, Michaela, talk, I saw it in 3D the first time, mm -hmm. and that was an added bonus mm -hmm. to it. You know, I mean, I like 3D. I liked it being in 3D. I thought because it was actually projecting stuff out into the audience, it's like, okay, it's 3D doing 3D. Mm -hmm. yep. And then you go see everything else that came out post Avatar, and they don't no you know? right. it's like everything goes backwards yeah it's, like, a, it's the, a depth of field depth not a, a 3D. not anything yeah. coming out yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if i put those glasses on you know it's like i'm i'm it's great that i can see into the picture but right. if i'm paying my money i want you to poke me in the eye every five <laughs> minutes with something yeah. yes and uh, my bloody valentine at least tries that mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean i think uh I'm going to I'm going to give it a recommend. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it as a old school slasher movie done right in 2009. Michaela, what do you think? Uh yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said, Colin. Uh just a couple of things. Did you guys notice that there was like flyers up for the the Valentine's dance in a couple places like oh, in the there? diner and stuff? Yeah, and one of the bands that said it was playing was uh Canary in a Cage. And I was uh, like, they are going good. deep with the that's details good. in this <laughs> movie. Good. So that's the amount of love and care this movie is being handled with. That's what um, we're missing. There was a there's a get together. A big town dance. A big town yeah. dance in that first one. Right. It doesn't feel like there's that. a community around these characters. It's not Valentine's Bluff, so they don't have the Valentine's dance. I guess, I guess not. Um, it, yeah, and uh, the thing about this movie is, uh, Colin, I think you were hitting on it a little bit, is I would like to start a campaign to bring back sincerity in movies. <laughs> um, not everything has to be tongue-in-cheek and winky at the camera. I think Deadpool started this trend that unfortunately has poisoned every genre of movie at this point where we just can't be sincere and serious about something. We have to be like ironic about it, and I'm t really, really, really tired of it, and I'm dreading this next Deadpool movie because I feel like it's going to have a resurgence again. And um, Like... It, there is a place for the scream and the self-referential movies and everything, but not every movie needs to be that. Um, and I like that even the actors in this movie are trying really hard and committing their best. They're not playing it like it's campy or cheesy. They're straightforward about this. And I love that about this movie. Um, the kills are really cool. I mean, yeah, the gore, like it is, it does look like 2009 and it, but I think my biggest knocks against this movie are, no original Harry Warden song yeah. and no scene of them making meals on the engine of a car because that stuck out to me so much from that original movie. Um, but yeah. like, these are like the most minor of gripes in a movie that somehow minor, minor. Yeah. Yes. A movie that take like their original didn't need to be remade. In my opinion, it's a perfect movie. I think that it's pretty much flawless as a movie. Um, so to remake that, I mean, Wow, when you look at the Halloween remakes compared to Halloween and you look at the My Bloody Valentine remake compared to My Bloody Valentine, it's like so different. Um, and I really wish this like this, I don't want to say franchise, but this j movie would get its due and its respect because I do feel like this, I feel like this one got lost in the shuffle of the 2000s remakes and the original just got lost in the shuffle of the original slasher run, at least in the mainstream. So I really want like this to gain more traction because it's so good i had not seen it for the first time up until about a year ago right. last valentine's day i watched it for the first time and i did not watch it in 3d okay. um i knew it was released in 3d i had never seen it before um but it's like obviously i could tell what scenes were meant to be the big 3d sure. moments but i didn't realize like even their driving scenes and everything were in i didn't realize literally the whole movie was 3d i thought it was just the action scenes so that was a pleasant surprise for me i still loved it even watching it in 2d i loved it the first time i saw it and was kind of sad i slept on it for so long so definitely recommend it it's 
it's a remake that does new things while still being faithful to the original story and it's really well done i loved it sean what'd you think I remember seeing this in theaters when it first came out. It was it was wild at the time. I say that to say that now I'm not so wild about this movie, but I mean, hearing you guys talk about it, it's uh, it's definitely more me. And maybe I'm holding because I like I like the irony of how what the that rhythm that horror movies got into. I'm a really big fan of it. I kind of grew up on it. So when I come across movies like this or even Thanksgiving, when they're kind of just straightforward as they are they're they i uh, they let me down a little bit, but I, that's, I got to try and think outside of that. Cause that's definitely just my expectations going into it. But for this movie, I think there is, there is enough there. I'm going to say that the only way you should watch this movie is in 3d, because I think that is the crowning element of this movie that allows me to recommend it and give it a pass. Cause I don't think I would recommend watching this in just regular 2d. I don't, think like you said the the writing is is functional but it's not anything above that at all i don't think um again the characters are not uh, the characters aren't great again nobody's happy in this movie and it's kind of a downer at that point um even if you're not comparing it to the original movie it's just like there's nothing uh, nothing happy about it why do i care if these people live i really don't because they're all just shitty people um, but there is, I mean, but uh, Tom Atkins, the 3d is the pokey 3d that we love. Um, that's great. Um, it, it's good enough. It's good enough. They shoot the killer really well. Again, I still think that's a great costume for a killer in, in an era where you don't always get that. Cause you can get, I mean, we've seen some plenty of horror movies where they just throw in a cheap Halloween costume and, you know, try and go with that. And when everyone's trying to be iconic, um, this one kind of, gives you that imagery that I think could last for a while. I don't want 13 sequels out of it, but it is, it is a good image. Um, it'd be a good uh, action figure on the shelf, holding mm-hmm. that ax next to everybody else. It does enough where I'll recommend it. But again, see it in 3d if you're going to see it, cause that's how you're going to get the most enjoyment out of this movie. Um, yeah. So I'll recommend it in 3d. So that is, that is freak show. Approved, it is. That's the three, it is. three recommend. That means you're contractually yes. obligated to watch it, having listened yes, in all the, the show. Even though it's and it's got a 10 minute naked chase scene. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. that. Bravo and uh, kudos to the actress, mm-hmm. Betsy Rue, for doing that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, uh, dedication, I would say. Uh, yeah. Even thank you for your cheapness. service. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for your service. <laughs> we appreciate it. There you so, go. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, next week we're going to watch a movie that was chosen by Holly. Who's not here tonight? Do we know what Holly? I don't is? know. It's a mystery. No, oh, it's a mystery. Oh, so, mystery big pick. Question, big question marks <laughs> coming up on the Instagram posts yep. <laughs> next week. I hope future me is excited about it. There you go. Right. Well, you you'll know? know about it before we yep. do because <laughs> yeah. it'll be on our yep. uh, yeah Facebook, Twitter, yep, social media before. Send me a signal, future me. Should right. I be worried? Should I be excited? Yeah. Give me something. So actually, like, by the time they're hearing this, they already know it. Yes. They know it is. We but were the we ones don't. who are left in suspense. <laughs> we haven't been left in suspense about a pick since a month ago. I, yeah. I, I, it hasn't been that long. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, so mystery movie next yep. week. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>